Mohammed Atta and Marwan al Shehi enrolled at Huffman Aviation. As foreigners, they needed student visas to take lessons. But with just tourist visas, they were accepted anyway. No advance booking and no questions asked. Atta and al Shehi walked into the front door, and we have no obligation whatsoever to do any background checks or passports or ID. They need to ID themselves the moment they're doing a test for the, for the license. Huffman had a lot of foreign students, but instructors found these two Arabs unusual. They didn't mix with other students, and they didn't show any of the typical newcomers' enthusiasm for flying. Was it difficult to give a Ta instructions? People say he's kind of arrogant, didn't want to take instructions. Yes, that's, uh, that's maybe one part of this um, character was uh, he wasn't very patient with instructions. He was just mostly want to fly the airplane, maybe with no patience, and no patience either. Several of Ata's fellow students considered him prickly and aloof. And what struck me particularly about Muhammad Atta was his eyes. They were immovable. They were extremely cold. And that never wavered. I can remember Atta very well striding towards the aircraft. So it was a means to an end, rather than uh, a pleasure or enjoyment, something you've always wanted to do. That wasn't there. That sparkle just was not there. One day, Anne Greaves was struck by bizarre celebrations coming from the computer room, where the two men had been on the internet. Muhammad Atta and al Shehi were hugging each other with joy and almost dancing in the room, and I thought this was extraordinary. In the United States, auch sein Touristenvisum wurde in Deutschland erteilt. Am 27. Juni fliegt er von München nach Atlanta, Georgia. Auch sein Ziel ist Florida. Huffman Aviation in Venice, Florida wird für Mohamed Atta und Marwan al shechi zum Trainingslager im Feindesland. Für knapp 40.000 Dollar erhalten beide am 21. Dezember eine Lizenz, die sie berechtigt, zweimotorige Flugzeuge für kommerzielle Zwecke zu fliegen. Dem Chef der Schule, Rudi Deckers, war vor allem Atta unangenehm aufgefallen. Am Anfang hatten wir viel Ärger mit Atta. Er machte seinem Namen alle Ehre mit seiner schlechten Attitüde. Ich habe ein paar Mal mit ihm geredet und als ich herausfand, dass er in Hamburg gelebt hatte, sagte ich eines Morgens zu ihm in unserer Kantine. Und er sah mich schockiert an mit einem Blick, der sagte, oh Gott, ein Amerikaner, der Deutsch spricht. Er wusste nicht, dass ich Holländer bin und ein bisschen Deutsch kann. Er war einfach ein schlechter Typ. Die frisch gebackenen Piloten fliegen im Alleingang nach Miami. Dort schaffen sie es nicht, das Flugzeug zu starten. Uh, Rudy, I guess what you wanted people to know was, geez, you were following the rules. You didn't just let these guys come in and fly. You were supposed to get their their student visas, and by George, you did six months late. Yeah, at 9-12, uh, uh, we've been asked many times uh, what the status was of these two students. And I have said I am pretty sure my student coordinated, took the passports, copies, and looked at their status and uh, applied for the visas. But I couldn't prove anything anymore. Uh, therefore, I was fairly happy on Monday when I received these uh, two letters to see that we did the right thing. Okay, well, let me ask you a question, though. You did receive these six months later, but they're going to people, be people saying, why would you let them take the lessons until you'd gotten the approvals? Why were they allowed to start training? Well, the issue is if you apply for the uh, visa, you can start training in the meantime. Normally, the INS sends the paperwork back within two, three months. So when you have a student for six months, that is not a problem. In this case, the INS sent it a little later, and therefore the students were already gone uh, when we received the paperwork uh, last Monday. Well, I understand, and this isn't supposed to be funny, but at the end of one of the articles, it said, in fact, Musawi had applied uh, to take to take the uh, training down there, and you still haven't heard heard about his paperwork, have you? 
No, nothing. Uh, but I don't. I had only two of these guys. Uh, I didn't have a third guy. Okay, Mark Smith, who do you blame for this? Oh, this is clearly the INS's fault. I mean, if the INS wasn't smart enough after what happened on September 11th to go back and figure out what, ha at a minimum, who on earth was planning on getting a visa to take flying lessons and to go through the student visa applications for people who were taking flying lessons before and just after September 11th, then I don't know who else can be blamed for it. I mean, shouldn't the INS have gone back and said, who's taking flying lessons, who wants to take flying lessons, and let's see if they're terrorists. Well, that's certainly one of the first things I would have done, but not only the INS, where does the, particularly the FBI or the Justice Department come into play? Well, I think it, they, they all play a role, but it seems to me that the INS people who work for the government, especially the INS, who is responsible, Catherine, as you know, for being in charge of securing our borders to determining yeah. who is allowed to come into the United States to work, to study, to tour about. It seems to me they have a responsibility independent of any yeah. other federal agency to ensure that the people who are applying through their agency only come into the country if they are not, among other things, terrorists. All right, well, let me ask Mark, I mean, Rudy, about that, because didn't these two, the two hijackers, have appropriate visas? One was business, one was tourist. They simply had to apply for these student visas to move forward. But you had good documentation on both these guys through the INS, didn't you? Yes, they were already in the United States, so we did not have, if they just came over to do some private flying, I didn't have the obligation to ask for a student visa. But due to the fact they were uh, tourists, and they wanted to follow the full professional course for six months, not just steering left and right, but the full course. Yeah. My obligation was already dictated by the government a long time ago to apply for student visas. How many students do you have from what we are labeling um, countries of concern, not just rogue nations, but countries that we're now concerned uh, house terrorists? Well, at the moment, we have nothing to concern about because we don't have foreign students. Uh, the policies are a little tighter and people are afraid to come over, plus the economy doesn't bring the students either. So right now there's nothing going on, uh, there's just no students anymore. Uh, I, I believe though that somebody can come at the border and can tell somebody uh, at the border patrol I'm coming over to the United States to see uh, the Empire State Building. When they're inside, they can change their mind and start training. So I don't believe that the INS can know up front what's going on. And I also want to comment on, on Mark's, uh, Mark, what he just said. The permits were issued on July and in August. That was prior to 9-11. I don't want to defend the INS here, but that was prior to what, I, what happened. You can't see in somebody's face what his intentions are. I couldn't yeah. see it. I couldn't see it, my people couldn't see it. How can the INS see that? But at the same time, Rudy, what he's, what he's saying is that they didn't go through the paperwork uh, immediately after 9-11 and figure out who was who and who was out there training and instead sent these approvals on through. That's, that's really an abomination. So Mark, what's the answer? What do we do with the INS? Well, Catherine, the first thing we need to do is figure out who was responsible for the application of Mohammed Atta to determine who we should fire first. Because unless these people are held accountable for the decisions they make in their jobs, then they're going to continue to make other mistakes. And Catherine, you have to understand, if Mohammed Atta, who is a known terrorist, who's already committed a terrorist act, if, we sent his, if, we, if they send his approval out in the mail, yeah. my question is, what other potentially fatal mistakes yeah. lie ahead from the INS. Okay, well, I certainly hope this revelation and, and President Bush's response will get the attention of the INS as well as the country. Mark Smith, Rudy Deckers, thank you both. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back. Aviation in Venice, we've marked it there on the map for you. Rudy Deckers owned the flight school where the hijackers trained. Two years after those attacks, he is still in southwest Florida, but now with a new business and a new outlook on life. Fox 4's Darren Sweeney has his story. I started a new company, I hired people, and that's what we need to do. We need to look into the future. While Rudy Deckers is looking ahead, he's not forgetting the past. His new business in Naples keeps him busy. It's not another flight school. He flies businesses to destinations all over the state. They're six-seaters. They're fast. The massive publicity, both good and bad, and financial impact of 9-11 forced him out of the flight school business. 
but he says he's not bitter. It's called bad luck, absolutely. I, I wish that I was involved in another way in the media by saving some people or something like that. Decker says the months following the attacks were rough, but the whole experience taught him some valuable life lessons. I realize how precious life is. When we had uh, the first anniversary, 9-11, a uh, day later, my granddaughter was born, and that gave me hope uh, because that shows new life, and that's we all need to have. Taking all of the good he can out of a terrible situation is all Decker says he can do, and he hopes others can use 9-11 the same way. We need to look into the future, yes, learn from the experience and act on the experience, but we got to go on. We can't stop. That's life. Darren Sweeney, Fox 4 News. Mm. Decker says once word got out that he essentially but unknowingly trained two of the hijackers, he was contacted by media outlets from all over the world, and he says he's done more than 1,000 interviews. But all eyes are focused on Florida now as the investigation itself is focusing on Venice. Two alleged hijackers may have lived and trained to fly right here in southwest Florida. NBC2's Amy Osher is in Venice right now, outside the home where the hijacking suspects stayed. Amy, what can you tell us? Craig, this morning, FBI agents shocked the couple who live in this Venice home by telling them two of their former boarders are likely two of the men who flew planes into one of the World Trade Center buildings. This news is also sending a local flight school into a tailspin. Flight school owner Rudy Decker's world was rocked for a second time. This morning when I find out that the FBI is conducting a full-scale investigation on students here, and now it comes to my doorstep. Two of the suspected hijackers earned their wings here. This is the plane that um, um, the two people were flying in, trained in. The two Middle Easterners enrolled at Huffman Aviation more than a year ago. While they worked toward their commercial licenses, they rented from the school's bookkeeper, Charlie Voss. Um, they had no place to stay they just popped in pretty much uh, as I recall unannounced no one suspected their terrorist plans but the Vosses didn't like their behavior it got pretty rugged and so we um, we did ask them to leave that's the last they heard until the FBI came knocking within 24 hours they'd seized the flight school's records they came for uh, all the files, uh, finding out if there would be more people um, involved. Three quarters of the student pilots here are foreigners. Like the rest, these two passed screening. These people uh, came uh, at our door and wanted to get training done. And, uh, you know, what can you do? I mean, it's for us, it's a customer. We're told the two students, one whose name is allegedly Mohammed Atta, both received their commercial multi-engine licenses here, and that was evidently enough to get them more advanced training. Back to you. Yeah, not trained enough to fly those big jets, take them off and land them, but enough to crash them into a building, allegedly. NBC 2's Amy Osher has been working on this story today. She joins us now from our Charlotte County newsroom. Amy. Jessica, we were at Rudy Decker's flight school yesterday when he got these letters. He was shocked, to say the least, and his surprise is being echoed by officials with the INS. But I saw these forms and I was like, what the heck is this? Two letters postmarked March 5th landed on Rudy Decker's doorstep Monday. This is the documentation that shows that the United States Immigration Service gave two visas, student visas, to Atta and al -Shihi. In September of 2000, Huffman Aviation applied for visas so that Mohammed Atta and Marwan al Shehi could attend flight school in Venice, Florida. A government stamp shows Atta was approved in July. They been issued M1 visas for both Atta and al till October 1st, 2001. That covered beyond September 11th, when the two men steered jets into the World Trade Center. But the paperwork was still sent. An INS spokesman calls it unfortunate. Well, it's regrettable that, that, uh, that these documents were sent out, since obviously um, uh, after September the 11th, um, there was no need to notify Huffman Aviation uh, that the change in status had been approved. An immigration watchdog group studied the INS actions relating to the terrorists and found a systematic failure. This document stamped proof one hand didn't know what the other was doing. I don't find it terribly shocking because of the fact that the INS... Uh